RealAgriculture.com is proud to present coverage of the 20th anniversary of Canada's Outdoor Farm Show in Woodstock, Ontario. We are here at Canada's Outdoor Farm Show at Woodstock, Ontario, and we are talking twin nozzles. Uh, Tom Wolf, you've been putting on quite the demo here. We've got all sorts of B-roll we'll be showing, and we're talking about, you know, comparing the patterns, uh, talking about flow rates, talking all sorts of different questions. Tell us what this demo is all about, and then we'll maybe chat about some specifics. So uh, the demo is all about showing producers firsthand what a twin fan nozzle is and what kinds of things they can expect from it, how they work. Uh, there's a few different models out there now and we uh, put five of them on this particular boom. Uh, we want to just make a pass through the soybean field here and show how they deposit on some water sensitive paper on the forward and backward side of a stake for example, sort of a simulating a wheat head perhaps. And then also under a foliage, uh, we went under a trifoliate leaf and a little further into the canopy top and bottom side of that. And uh, we just had the applicator, the, the producers come, or the guests come and look at the, the deposit from these various uh, sprays and sort of talk about them. And I think the upshot of it really is that uh, there is some potential for the twin fan to uh, improve deposition on the forward and backward side of, the, of a vertical target, for example. But we also recognize that the weather plays a big role. We saw a lot of the spray that deposits on the backward side of the head or the target depositing by wind. It just blew over from some drift. So we have to keep our eyes open about what the nozzle's role really is and what it can achieve. Uh, and I think we, we got some good discussion out of it today. Right, and uh, also interesting for me was to see, we did look at the paper, I got some shots of the, the paper there that shows the deposit pattern, that really it's the coarse droplets that were there on purpose, but we did see that finer spray sort of end up in places really because of turbulence. Because That's of right. Breeze, really. So we know that all nozzles produce a wide range of droplet sizes. All nozzles, even low drift nozzles, produce some of these fine sprays that are that can drift. But uh, more importantly, the the low drift nozzles produce big droplets, and those are those are the kinds of droplets that we can actually target. The small droplets are subject to wind, so they will move wh whichever way the wind blows. Uh, larger droplets will tend to move the direction that you point them. So if we point a a, a, a nozzle backwards and it sprays just a fine spray, you really have no control where that fine spray ends up. It'll probably become a drift cloud. It'll probably deposit somewhere on that basis. But if you spray a large droplet out of those, out of those uh, backward facing nozzles, uh, you have some control and those droplets will probably make their way to the target that they're heading towards because of their size. So many, much of the success of the twin fan nozzle has been because of the ability of the manufacturers to make coarser sprays that do that. And that's the one, those are the ones that we really want to aim for. Uh, we've in, you know, years ago we had twin nozzles, but they were usually very fine. They created a mist and the actual angle was relatively irrelevant. Now we're talking about asymmetric angles, very specific angles, and that matters only because we're combining that with big droplets that actually go in that direction. Right, and so we did, we took a look here and I've got some footage of, of looking at all these different nozzles, the pattern they create, but also the angles. So just tell me briefly sort of the, the thinking between uh, an asymmetrical nozzle. So the, the idea is as follows, a single vertical nozzle moving through space, moving forward in this direction, will typically move a spray cloud slightly forward with it. And so a vertical target that is here will get some impact on this side, but very little on this side. A double nozzle with a symmetrical pattern will give you some here and some there, but less here because it's that, that angle that fan is moving away and not that much deposits. An asymmetrical design angles the backward facing fan a little more aggressively up and the forward one a little more down. So it diminishes the contribution of the, of the nozzle on the forward facing side and enhances the contribution on the backward facing side. And so the deposit on both sides is evened out more. This allows the operator also to drive a little faster because obviously travel speed is a function of the backward speed of the nozzle. So, or vice versa actually, but I'm sure you can straighten that out. And the, uh, that design allows you that faster travel speed, which is important. I think when we have to cover a lot of acres, you, you don't want to be driving five miles per hour necessarily all the time. In some cases you should be, but not always. Great, okay, thanks so much, Tom. All right.